Okay, so whenever I press the card, call recording, do you get the message call recording is on as well? I do, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, like we started the unit with understanding of system analysis and design uh, from the software development methodologies and then, you know, by starting, you know, requirement analysis and then, you know, the methods of getting requirements and then depicting, you know, those requirements into diagrams. Yeah, that's yeah. basically the analysis. Yeah, so I have been, you know, repeating this, you know, every time so that you should remember, you know, forever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, by memory, yeah. So yeah. the third one, like I advised, that uh, is, you know, uh, is again, you know, the feasibility, then, you know, discussion about the data flow diagrams and, uh, you know, the UML. Yeah. Yeah. So the unit specification, they have really, you know, mixed up the things like, you know, in the learning outcome two and learning outcome three, they have mixed up. They are repeating, you know, the data flow diagrams entity relationship again and again. Yeah. So I won't be going through the, uh, you know, all of the topics, you know, uh, one by one, but I would, you know, start a detailed, you know, discussion on the UML today. Okay, yeah. Right. So like, you know, requirement elicitation, how to get the requirements, some definitions and techniques, you know, for uh, this have been discussed. And techniques like you know you analyze the stakeholders brainstorming one-on-one -on -one interview group interview document analysis focus group interface analysis and blah 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 they help you for the requirement elicitation yeah yeah okay then certain problems you know being discussed on uh, for the requirement gathering Challenges, problem of scope, problem of understanding, problems of volatility. They are self-explanatory, you know. Is it okay? I should just skip, you know, those. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Yeah. So then requirement quality, you know, visualization, consistent language, guidelines, consistent use of templates, and documented, documenting dependencies. Yeah. So yeah. these you know, terms needs to be considered when you talk about the uh, quality of requirements. Like, you know, whatever the requirement you get, you need to look at the visualization using tools that promote better understanding of the desired end product, such as visualization and simulation. Language, using simple language. Like, you are getting the requirement, and are the requirements, you know, written well, do is the requirement and document has is a good quality document so you need to focus on these things you know like uh, guidelines and use a template in order to write the you know uh, requirements yeah okay yeah then simple definition process with specification the process is specification from the uh, point of view of design specification, yeah, by following the unit content is basically the creating data flow diagrams using data dictionary is basically the process specification. Yeah, you have a data flow diagram and then you follow the data dictionary that how the process should go through and obviously you would be using like a uh, English then you have some decision table and you know some so every like you know deciding or advising a kind of path towards the you know uh, flow of the system like you know defining the path for the flow of the system yeah okay. so yeah this is kind of terminology used for the process specification. However, this is within the design. 
right okay. yeah. design specification specifies that what process what links would you know look like within the system not mm -hmm. not for that much complicated yeah simply so okay. so some again you know how the, those would be done using obviously data flow diagrams and uh, entity relationship diagrams yeah and then mm -hmm. there is the you know implementation plan that how you would be implementing and obviously you need to review the post implementation that how you evaluate the effectiveness of the uh, developed system right are you clear about the post implementation review uh could you go over that or is or does it tell me in there does it tell me there post? like you know to evaluate the effectiveness of system and development after the system has been in production so you want to review review means you want to evaluate how the system works in simple words okay. whether it is fulfilling the requirements or not okay. right so and it usually takes six months is that right it really depends you know uh, on the system but normally you know that uh, until unless all the features have been used yeah mm. probably it might be used within one month yeah it might be used you know for example if particular you know functionality is used after one year then you are supposed to get it evaluated uh, in, in one year so really depends but normally you know uh, in the six months is i believe that there's a kind of guarantee period in the software development or the software terminology they use or the contracts they use uh, like say like you evaluate this system for the six months for example and then you know there would be you know within the guarantee hmm. like that. Yeah, this um I really like this unit because it's making me think about um all the things really that we should have done on a project that we what we've just finished. Yeah. Um I wasn't heavily involved in it. Um there was so, they had somebody else that was doing all this kind of stuff. Okay. Um uh, and a lot of the external consultants were used, but it it okay. just would have been nice to have known a bit more about what was happening. I was I was involved at, at the end bit when it came to you know installing it and deploying it. Okay. But, um, yeah, I, I, I I'm just thinking it would have been nice to have had um, six months to uh, you know um, re review do do a review yeah. of a system, but yeah, it that's didn't good. happen. But now yeah. you recall now you recall the process and you are trying to think you know as an analyst yeah yeah i'm thinking about it in a completely different way now and uh, i just think there's so many things that we could have done yeah, to yeah get a lot better yeah like you know the analyst job yeah yeah is basically the a top level job over the programmers yeah yeah like there is a certification like you know uh uh ooad yeah okay yeah oriented analysis and design yeah and you can pass this certification using you know the uh, one second using the a uh, book which is you know uml distilled by this one UML distilled and writers are Greedy Booch, Ram Ivar Jacobson and Ramba. Okay. Yeah. So like you know you said that you really wanted to be in into that process, but obviously you were not obviously in that position officially and you were not aware of this, you know, uh like uh process as well. Yeah. But like you know the uh, 
this is just the system analysis and design yeah and yeah. there is there is you know another uh, level basically yeah like okay. you yeah another level which is basically the like you analyze and design yeah and then you get the certification for the analysis and design yeah that's the one certification and there is another you know certification for the design patterns yeah okay the certification for design patterns that would you know give you a kind of you know an upper level or advanced level of you know the analyst oh do, do you have those certifications unfortunately not but you know in 2000 you know uh, i believe 3 yeah in 2003 when i was doing you know i did the certification of java right okay you know that java is a very good language but it's difficult however people do it and get certified as well have you heard about the uh, uh, jcs uh, java J yes java certification J jc2 Yes, uh, yeah, I've I've heard of that. You mentioned that a while ago, um, yeah. and I I looked it up after you mentioned it. Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. really difficult. Yeah, that's SCJP two. Yeah, SCJP two Java certification. Uh, you know, I did it. You know, about fifteen years ago. Yeah, not fifteen. Okay. One second, eight and seven. Yeah, fifteen years ago. So SCJP, you know uh was the certification and a training academy i was you know uh studying over there yeah so they taught us you know the object oriented analysis and design yeah and design patterns as well i did some you know laziness otherwise i should have done as well even i can do right now as well yeah so yeah only only the purpose is to concentrate yeah However, yeah. however, in those days we had a lots of you know uh, 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 opportunities to discuss with a very big class, and that was a kind of specialized you know uh, uh, training. And uh, so, well, let me come back. So, Java. Oh, sorry. The UML uh, is the modeling language that help you to understand the analysis and design yeah okay. understand and implement implement diagrams yeah okay yeah okay so by we were over you know the we were discussing the implementation review so implementation review is the checking the effectiveness of the implemented system so is that clear yeah, that's fine now. Yeah, I'm clear with that. Yeah. Yeah, I created many routes, you know, after this, you know, a single word. Yeah. So, post implementation review. So, that's it uh, about the just, you know, explanatory things, you know, I listed into this, you know, slide. However, after, you know, just giving, a, you know, smooth, uh, you know, uh, review like you know definition of requirement elicit elicitation or uh, let me have a look here uh, that we should be aware with the feasibility study how to get the requirements what the process specification is like you know defining the uh, links and the flow of information within the design diagrams yeah okay yeah yeah obviously using data flow diagrams entity relationship you know diagrams and the proposed solution would be based on you know implementation plan deployment plan and post implementation plan yeah okay yeah so you need to implement and deploy a plan and post implementation review we discussed yeah in a slide yeah that how you would evaluate yeah yeah and evaluate uh, remember this evaluation is done 
that what is the system expected to do and what is the system doing okay you want to write down this yeah can hang on two secs i'm just gonna um uh, i'm just gonna get notepad a minute and then um yeah if you could say that again that would be good uh, okay yeah so so the evaluation is that what is expected to happen work is expected to happen yeah happen. yeah and what is the is the system doing actually okay what the system is actually doing doing right. okay like you know you must have heard the word evaluate at all stages of the study have you yeah i have yeah i've, I've heard that yeah yeah so basically that is the evaluation yeah okay yeah so you might find you know lots of you know uh things in a research papers research study yeah and uh, you when they say like if you are able to evaluate that what you proposed and what you achieved yeah and you justify with the results yeah that these are the results and then you successfully achieved it with some proof yeah and you successfully evaluated means you did well okay yeah so yeah. like you know whatever the reports you know you write yeah the readers or the reviewers you know they look at the abstract the summary from the first page yeah that what the topic is about what the report is about yeah because you claim something in the beginning that what you are going to do is that isn't it yeah oh, yeah okay yeah. yeah they jump to you know uh to the evaluation and what happens when you write anything you give a summary then you give introduction then you analyze this analyze it then you design it yeah then you implement it yeah then you test it okay test means whatever the results you got with the system yeah then you basically evaluate yeah okay okay so when you evaluate means you test the results with the initial requirements uh, i mean you compare the results of the test with the initial requirement okay makes sense yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so evaluation so what i was discussing is that uh, in the learning outcome three like you know implementation plan and deployment plan post implementation they, they are likely you know related with the you know coding but you we have done the let's say analysis and design and we should be able to propose an implementation plan for example that which components needs to be implemented in which sequence right okay yeah and are you clear about the deployment the 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 deployment yeah what is yeah, it that, that that the 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 deployment is where where you the way I, the way i would see it is where you effectively take what you've done and you um m sort of make it happen set it all up um you actually de de uh, de deploy deploy it to the business so they can use it ah uh, deploy the business as well as you know you install on the system or migrate like you know copy into the system or you know uh, move into the SQL system where it needs to run 
here yeah so you copy or move or install yeah or configure whatever you have implemented obviously you normally you don't implement the system uh, i mean don't implement anything uh, wherever you use you implement it you know somewhere else yeah and then you try to install or deploy on uh, into on you know the systems wherever they are supposed to be used yeah okay yeah obviously deployment obviously this for example the system won't be you know installed on uh, one computer but may be installed on lots of computers and each computer compu computer needs to have like a terminal or server whatsoever so you need to have a plan yeah yeah okay okay so hmm. so implementation plan deployment plan and post implementation plan like you know you need to evaluate what the system needs to what the system is expected to to do and what the system is you know doing actually yeah yeah clear yeah, uh, yeah alleviate yeah okay good so now we start with the you know system analysis and design oh, i mean the design using the uml now okay, okay yeah. yeah yeah so before i you know go to the uml let me see you know so this one is basically the oad certification object oriented analysis and design certification this used to be the ibm certification yeah but okay. i i think you know the ibm is merged with the oracle yeah okay yeah so there's one you know uh, oad certification and another one is the basically the design pattern certification yeah so design pattern certification is basically a kind of you know a next step to the design pattern yeah mm. uh, next step to the object oriented analysis and design and all these are uh, both of these certifications you know are basically good and career building for analyst yeah okay so probably you know i would send you the links to those certifications yeah, yeah. and you would realize that you know after reading the books uh, you know maybe these two books the first book for example uh, this one uml distilled it will help you to clear the object oriented analysis and design certification right yeah. and the other book i would advise you that that by after studying that book you should be able to pass the design pattern certification as well okay yeah design pattern is like you know being an analyst you know all best possible structures okay yeah if you know that how and for example an enterprise level you know system needs to be designed yeah you would be using you know any particular you know controller or view or skeleton of the system yeah an architecture of the system if you know well yeah and if you if you are advising to your you know programmers yeah then you assume that you would be at the higher level isn't it yeah i get that yeah so so um with the certifications do you like do you have to do them in order you you can't you have to do them in the right order otherwise you'll put yourself in at the deep end 
I believe that first is, you know, the uh, after studying the this, you know, OOAD object oriented analysis and design, then next is lit the design pattern. Yeah. OK, yeah. But at least, you know, if you get into the analysis to become an analyst. Yeah, it has a value to be honest. OK. Yeah. So, well, once you would study this and would try the mock up exam, yeah, some questions, you would be able to know that wh what they talk about. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so M maybe I m maybe what I will do is when I've done when I finish this level four, I might look at that. Yeah. And try and do or, or I might. I'm not sure what to do. I might do the level five. Yeah, and then do this. Yeah, yeah, like you know the the level four, level five. They are the academic levels. Yeah, and these certifications are basically vocational one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So really depends on the interest. I'm just you know uh, advising you that these are the you know extra things people do in order to reach a higher ranks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I get. Is is there a level six for for this? Can, um... Uh I believe you know for the H N C and H N D, you know, uh, we like U K V S T offers you know level seven, yeah, and uh, I'm not sure about level six from the same provider. Right, okay. So level six is normally being taught in the universities. Yeah, okay. The the you know the last year of the uh the uh, the final year of the university. And the uh, level seven, yeah. Yeah, is it the, is it level seven in computing, is it? No. What I uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, fine. but but what happens? You know, the after doing level four and level five, yeah, with uh, uh, the college progression, like from like this, uh, you know, the blended learning, or you know, through the any college, one can do the level six at uni. Oh, okay. Cool. And the uni level is, you know, the final year of the graduation. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know that why the level six is not being you know offered. Uh, maybe it is based on the some project or uh, you know. But as I remember, like in the BCS, yeah, BCS courses there used to be level six. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, one of my students used to do the level six. That was a uh, you know the. Uh, diploma. Yeah. yeah. Diploma. One second. Uh, yeah. D um. Derby. Uh, Derby University. They do a level six diploma. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically the professional graduate diploma in the. IT and that's the level six. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so okay. there is definitely a level six and possibly being taught. You know, not only the universities but the colleges and you know our university as well. But ATHE, you know, is until level four and level five and level seven as well. But we'll we'll explore and let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay. So. Now, the let us come to the UML now. According to this book, this you know uh, book follows the system development methodology is a unified process, right? Okay. Like you know the what is UML and then you know development process they follow is basically the 
rational unified process yeah so mm -hmm. rational unified process is basically it it starts with the inception then elaboration and you know so like you know if you recall then analysis design implementation terms were used over there in the normal models yeah okay yeah in the rup rational unified process they give name inception elaboration construction and transition inception makes an initial evaluation of the project like you know the feasibility elaboration identifies the primary use cases of the project like it's is going towards the analysis then right okay yeah. and construction is the build process developing functionality to release so construction is basically the uh, implementation transition includes the various late stage activities like you know the maintenance and you know the other things after the deployment or including deployment is that clear yeah okay so conventionally it's the requirement analysis system analysis design implementation the inception is kind of a requirement and the feasibility elaboration is you know the uh, system analysis and design and construction is the implementation transition is the maintenance and deployment something yeah okay yeah so they have their own terminology but they call these things you know into this way and then obviously i said like a design patterns yeah patterns are an advanced you know uh, kind of art that is the study about the you know architectures of different types of systems yeah okay yeah now we come to the uml now now if we look at the chapter 1 now uh one second Page 14. Now the major diagrams used in the UML is basically the class diagram. Like if you would read this, you know, book, then you would be dealing with two things. if for example if you have a scenario yeah then in a scenario you will have a noun and verb okay yeah makes sense so noun yeah. would be the classes yeah yeah noun would be the classes and verbs would be the use cases okay yeah yeah so you need to remember so one of the core artifacts of the uml is class diagram right okay another is the use case diagram right so how is the use case diagram use case diagram is there is an actor and there is a name of the use case the actor does a particular verb right okay yeah then here is the communication or interaction diagram that for example which which method which object would you know will do what like it would in, it would initiate a message like a message is a function here right okay yeah so then a package diagram yeah a package for example package name it has has you know different classes class 1 class 2 class 3 is a package diagram then activity diagram for example an activity would start with this symbol and then there is a branch then there is another activity they would you know be a kind of conditional 
and then activity has to to end right okay so yeah. you need to look at the activity diagrams and in what sequence maybe the sequence is you know let's say class diagram then the sequence was initiated with a create message to another object and the object for example return the message to the same class yeah and the same mm -hmm. class you know gave a message to another entity yeah so the sequence yeah, okay. of messages is done between the you know classes and okay and the class is an entity yeah and okay. a noun yeah okay yeah then there is a state diagram as well like you know which which activity is in which state yeah so you you try to write the uh, like a uh, this you know uh, rectangle with you know edges and state one this state and this state this change the state from this state to this state okay yeah that's it so the uml is based on the class diagrams use case diagrams activity diagrams sequence diagrams deployment diagrams use case diagram activity diagram sequence diagrams interaction diagrams and uh, yeah these diagrams as a as an as a major diagrams right okay yep yeah. i've just and, done a um i've just made a note of those yeah like you know it's been about 15 years yeah we did remember it and now i'm typing you know the from my that memory Wow, that's good. Yeah. So let me recall again. Deployment diagram, activity diagram, and uh, package diagram. Yeah, class diagram. and there is one you know class association diagram as well sequence diagram state diagram yeah so yeah. if you would be interested that in those days, you know, 
Hello. Hello, I can hear you now. Yeah, the the join me always, you know, gives a buzzer. Yeah, that fifteen minutes are left. You you do not, you know, uh, exceed the timing. That's why it goes off for a minute. Well, oh, right, okay. <laughs> no, that's that, not. Do you think that's to let somebody else um, yeah. go on? As, yeah. Unofficially. Yeah, sort of, yeah. So, UML, like I advise you, you need to start with a scenario. Yeah. Scenario would be based on the noun and the verbs. Yeah. So, yeah. for the nouns, you will be creating the classes. Yeah. And any verbs, you would be creating the, you know, use cases, right? Okay. And all the game would be within the classes and the use cases. Okay. Right? And then you would be dealing, you know, this book, yeah, has advised, like, you know, used, uh, for example, the... Uh, official diagram types of the UML, like activity diagram is on the page uh, 11, yeah, in chapter 11, yeah, class diagram is discussed in 3, 5, yeah, communication diagram is given in chapter 12, component diagram given in 14, composite structure 13, that's it. If you can understand each and every bit of the each diagram, from this book, yeah, you are done. Okay. Yeah. How you can create these diagrams? You can create these diagram using software rational rows. Yeah. You can create the diagram using the Microsoft Visio. Yeah. yeah. And even okay. there are more tools, you know, which allow you to, uh, you know, create diagrams using UML. Okay, so so that so the key to it is really to read that book. Um yeah. and I I should be able to crack it then what what UML is. Yeah. Okay. And what I was advising that uh, I wrote my project of you know graduation and its analysis and design in UML. Right. Okay. So after you read this, then probably I would be able to send you the that you know those chapters to you, and you will be able to have a look at what the project is about and how the analysis and design is done. Okay. So yeah. So I would be able. Hopefully, then I'd be able to understand it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. that was, uh, you know, uh, kind of 15 years old and at the level I was drawing, I was, you know, the final year, you know, student. I was not that much good enough, but I did, you know, I realized that it, even today, I, you know, uh, I proud myself that ages ago I did that much, you know, work, which is still, you know, uh, recognizable. Yeah, even though it was 15 years ago, I bet a lot of that stuff is still the same today, isn't it? Yeah, because the UML, UML thing is basically the same, and maybe they might have done, you know, slightly changes, but it's 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 been done, you know, since then, and uh, whoever want to, you know, uh, start with, it's best to start. Great, okay. I will I'll try so, and work my way through that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, even, uh, for example, a school registration system in UML. Right? Okay. So, if you go through the term of the school registration system, then you will be able to understand that, see, 
how use cases you know can be done for a school registration system for example a student can do the registration and administrator can manage the examination a student can uh, log in into the system a student can give the test yeah administrator can generate the reports administrator can you know uh, do or interact with the test is to uh, the administrator can log in into the student as well can you have a look this yeah um, yeah i'm yeah i've got it on my screen as well actually at this end yeah yeah, yeah. so now see that this is the basically the standard yeah to create the analysis and design okay yeah like you know this is the another you know diagram maybe so if you could have a look a student login course course is something there and then you know registration is done and database something like that so this is the basically diagrammatic language used in the you know uh, uml if you are good if you if you have studied once yeah then you know you will be you know expert into this rational rows for uml diagrams and how you can you know uh, use this you you can create these diagrams you can create these diagrams using the rational rows and also the microsoft visio yeah yeah uh, so f for this assignment do i have to create a diagram uh you have a look you know at the requirements I believe that yeah. you would need to create the diagrams, yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, like, you know, they are, they are using like this, uh, you know. I think you should be able to look at the video. Are you able to see the, you know, frames of the video? Yeah, uh, yeah I can see, yeah. It's, it's a little bit slow, but I can see it, yeah. Now you can have a look at how he, you know, drags uh, any like a note. One second. Like he took, you know, the one use case item. Yeah, new use case, and yeah. then he should he can also take the actor, then you know the arrow, and uh, in this way you know you should be able to create the you know uh, diagram using the rational rows. This is this software is a rational rows. I think it's a free, but you know. If you have any difficulty, then you know I might have the copy or Microsoft Visio also, you know, uh, has got all the UML, uh, you know, diagrams that you can draw. Okay, yeah, I think I've got Visio at work actually. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, so, I'll probably do it on Works computer. Yeah. So that's about the system analysis and design. Okay. Yeah. Previously, there used to be entity, you know, ERD and data flow diagrams. Yeah, but you know, they are the conventional one when it comes to the object orientation oriented, you know, uh, analysis and design, then you use, you know, the UML, the class diagrams, the association diagrams and, uh, you know, activity diagrams. That's the terminology used in the UML. Okay. Right, so yeah. that's it. That's all about the system analysis and design. Do you want to ask any? 
Um, yeah, there was one thing. Um, with this... Hello. Hello. Yeah. H hello. Yeah, I, c I can hear you now. Um, yeah, there was just two, two, um, two little things I wanted to say. Um, yeah. Earlier, we talked about um, e e e elevate, didn't we? Say again. Uh, earlier, we talked about um, e elevate. Uh, evaluation. Evolution, yeah. Could you type yeah. that on the screen? I just want to make sure I've got the right spelling. Yeah, sure. You can see the screen as well, yeah. Um, I can Um, it's still on YouTube at the moment. Yeah. Can you see the new tab? No, I can't. No, I, I can't. No, I can't. Um, One second, yeah. So, E V A L U A T I O N, evaluation. E V A U L. No, E V A L U A T I O N. A T I. Okay. Like a variation, like it just put, you know, uh, E evaluation. Yep, that's fine. The the other the other question. Um, yeah. that, I, that I had as well is um, this recording. Um, yeah, you you will upload this one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's fine then. I'll I'll um, I'll speak to you next time. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, I would try to have a class on Sunday. And uh, but let you know before. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Speak to you then. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. And see you next time. Yeah. Yep, see you next time. Cheers, right, bye. bye.